speed a lot, but just the independence. I was never really good at team sports in the first place. So the independence of it where, I mean, I, I just had to count on myself. And it's a really uh, self-criticizing kind of sport because you know if something messes up, you did it. There's a lot of second, third, fourth, fifth generation race car drivers, and it just gets in your blood. And either you have that desire or, or you don't really. I grew up around racing. My dad raced uh, when I was a baby. Uh, actually, my mom went into labor with me at a racetrack here at Topeka at uh, Shawnee Speedway. Um, my grandpa, he used to do jalopies back in the day. Uh, good luck charms and rituals fade in and out. You keep them until they don't work anymore. Um, I like to wear animal print underwear. <laughs> I had one where I wore a pink shirt, actually, before every race. You know, there's a lot of superstitions in racing, like no chicken on race day and no peanuts in the pit area. Well, on race day, we don't eat chicken, we don't eat peanuts, and I don't, I don't have green on my car <laughs> most of the time. I'm not going to believe in superstitions. I'm not going to buy into these things. I still feel a little bit funny when I eat chicken on race day. <laughs> It's just so surreal. You're sitting in that car, you're strapped in, you know, you're just so tight in there, like you can barely move. You've got your ear molds in for your radio with your crew communication. You've got your helmet on and the world is just blocked out. It's scary and fun and a whole bunch of different emotions at one time. Uh, I mean, when things are going right, it's just one of the most relaxing feelings in the world. Doesn't matter what's going on outside. If you've ever gone skydiving or bungee jumping or the most, whatever the most adrenaline rush you've ever had. It's that adrenaline rush for a half hour straight. You can hear your own heart beating. You can just hear yourself breathe and that's it. And it's just so completely intense. And it's just, the, it's the coolest feeling in the world. You're so excited. You don't know if you want to smile, jump up and down or throw up. I, I love the smell and, and my, my gear will, will have a certain smell to it. Uh, you smell racing fuel. That's a sweet smell of racing fuel. It's, it's something that you dream, I dream about at night. You know, I'll wake up, I smell racing fuel. <laughs> you don't really notice it a lot once you do it a lot. The speed, you go on 170, 180 miles an hour. And you really notice it if somebody wrecks or somebody stops next to you and you go by them, then you're like, oh, okay, I'm going pretty fast. Heat is a major factor. We race in the summer months. But once you're in your fire suit, it's cooler in your fire suit because it's kind of like a protective shield almost from the heat. So it's still about 110, 120 degrees, but it's a lot cooler. When they come up on your driver's side, you can feel their engine. You can feel it vibrating inside your chest. So You might hold your breath for a second, and I mean, you're just constantly doing something and you forget to breathe almost sometimes or something scary, you just kind of hold your breath because you're gripping so tight. In a race car, it's only in your, your mind that you have to train and that it affects. So when something bad happens or you know you messed up or some, a lot of bad things happen in one day, it really weighs on you mentally because that's the only thing you can change. Uh, you have so many things going on. Everything's so exciting. Then you get anger involved in it. Somebody cuts you off or somebody hits you in the door or hits you in the back bumper. You got to keep your feelings and your attitude in check. Um, that's hard to do because you got thousands of dollars wrapped up in your race car, you got sponsors watching, you got fans watching. So you have to be professional and be fast at the same time. You have to be safe, but be out of control. I'm kind of an adrenaline junkie to a certain point. I mean, that you're so close to something really bad happening, but at the same time, you're not, I mean, you're not wrecking or you're not doing, I mean, the feeling of that is just really good, knowing that something could go wrong, but it's not. Do you ever try to be out of control and in control at the same time? Because to be a good race car driver, you got to drive on the edge of out of control. You're afraid of wrecking only because you're afraid of failure, not because you're afraid of getting hurt. That's not what scares us. What scares us is not being fast enough, not being good enough, because this is all we've ever wanted to do. I take every precaution you can. I wear what I can afford for the top of the line safety equipment. Every race car driver knows and respects the fact that you can get hurt and even killed racing, but you can't be afraid of it. 
it, that that's not a fear that we harbor. It's something that we respect, but you don't fear it. I was fighting for the lead. Come out of turn two, and I had a flat tire. Left rear went flat. Car went sideways, and a, a, my nose hit the guy next to me, which shot me the other way. And the flat tire dug into the dirt, and I started barrel rolling, went three times door to door. I wasn't scared one bit. I hear people that don't understand say, oh, that car wasn't built very well. That's what they're supposed to do. Um, they're supposed to crush and crash and collapse to absorb the impact. If it stayed solid, your body would be the one absorbing all of that impact. I'm actually more scared about the race car getting hurt than I am myself, because if something bad happens, I'm, usually, I mean, you have the medics that come out, then everybody, your family's worried about you, but the first thing, you can I go back on the racetrack? How's the car? Every flip, I heard more money going down the drain. That was a little disconcerting. <laughs> You're dodging a bullet. You know, you really are, but that's what our job is. And NASCAR has done everything to ensure that the sport just continues to get safer. When I first saw a person wearing my shirt, I about fell over. I said, holy cow, somebody that's not a friend or family member is wearing one of my shirts. I just couldn't believe that. I mean, just to see somebody wearing your T-shirt or merchandise the first time, it's, I mean, that's really big. When you get out of your race car and you see 20, 30 people wearing a Troy Baumgartner shirt, it hits you here because those working class people attach themselves enough to you and to your car that they went and bought that shirt. You see more little kids kind of talking to you and you know what you do or say influences them. Just I'm, as I know when I was a little kid and I had a favorite driver, what they did and said influenced me also. Like after races, when a family comes to the pits to say hi, there's a mom, a dad, and children. I, do, I take a knee. I forget that the parents are even there, and I talk to the children. You know, it's about them. I got, a, I got an email from a little boy last week, and the subject line, I get chills. The subject line said, inspired fan. And he said, dear Jennifer Jo Cobb, I'm 12 years old, and I had a brain tumor removed, and I'm now going through radiation. And I told my parents that if Jennifer Jo Cobb won't give up, I won't give up. When I win a race, I get my picture taken with the trophy, and then I jump up into the stands. And then I'll go like this for this side of the crowd, and this for this side of the crowd. Whoever's loudest, that's where I walk to. And then I pick out a child standing at the fence and give them the trophy. And the fans that I meet that have followed my career or that give you just a couple of words of encouragement, it just goes so such a long ways. It means a lot. Racing is a money game. It was designed not to be that way. It was a way for poor guys to go out and have a good time with a family car. And back in the 40s, 50s, 60s, they'd race their car, take the number off the door and drive it home. My parents would always tell me, you know, you, you can't do this because we can't afford it. And I would say, well, by golly, we're gonna figure out how to afford it. And so I started studying marketing and business. The business side of it is a very major big part because Racing, especially NASCAR racing and the racing I do, is really sponsor driven. And without money, it doesn't exist. My goal has always been to race competitively at the top level of NASCAR, which is now the Sprint Cup Series. I'd like to eventually become a Sprint Cup driver. Of course, I'm one level down. I drive nationwide cars at the moment. My concern is, is it possible Yes. Is it probable? No. But neither was my racing in the NASCAR Bush Series, the NASCAR Nationwide Series, making a career out of being a race car driver, a public speaker. Yeah, I'd just like to go as far as the sport will let me go. Even if it's staying at Thunder Hill, racing a street stock, that's great. I'm having a blast. I'm living a dream and loving it.